I'm on a quest to add the perfect 2-in-1 to my roster of daily drivers. It has to be small, useful, and affordable. Now I have two excellent contenders for the title and I need to spill my thoughts into the void of zeros and ones to help decide which one will stay and which one will go. Slap Tech. I've gone through many entries over the past year, ranging from tiny and gutless to powerful but hot and heavy. I've settled for a great middle ground that's light in power but also light on the scale and light on the pocketbook. These two all-rounders are what I've found, and I'm having a really hard time deciding which one to keep between the Dell Latitude 7320 2-in-1 and the Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Yoga Gen 2, both from 2021 and both available at around the $600 price point. I'm going to evaluate both based on the categories from my laptop reviews and give them each a maximum score of 5 per category. Keep in mind that the scores are relevant to just these two contenders and don't relate to all laptops. For each category, one laptop will get the 5 and the other will also get a 5 or less in relation to the other for a max of 70. These scores are reflections of my personal impressions of these laptops. Please voice your disagreements or support of my method in the comments below. Let's begin. The AC adapters for these laptops is a non-issue. They're both the same weight and size class. One being a little smaller than the other is not an extra boon to its mobility. They both also have the same cord length and use an upgradable from the wall cord. Fives all around. Comparing the battery life is pretty straightforward. They both use the same CPU, the i7-1185G7, and feed it a max of only 15 watts under load. The biggest difference in power siphoning peripherals would be the display, where the ThinkPad drives more pixels at 1200p to the Latitude's 1080p. It also doesn't help the ThinkPad that it's equipped with a smaller maximum battery of 53 watt hours to the Latitude's 63. It's no mystery that the Latitude has a longer battery life of 8 hours and 45 minutes of internet work use to the ThinkPad's 8 hours. Likewise, streaming video lasts for 8 hours on the Latitude and 6 hours and 15 minutes on the ThinkPad. I could live with the ThinkPad's battery life, but the Latitude does hold a noticeable lead. It'll get the 5, and the Latitude is close enough for a 4. Build quality is a tough choice. The Latitude gives off the impression that it was built inside of a hollowed out chunk of brushed aluminum. It's tough and highly resistant to blemishes. The ThinkPad is wrapped in magnesium alloy. It's flexible, meaning it bends but doesn't elicit creaky nonsense when torquing the body. Fingerprints and oils are more readily visible here and take some extra effort to buff out. What's going to pocket the win for the ThinkPad is that magnesium alloy is more comfortable overall to utilize. The aluminum body of the Latitude is uncomfortably cold upon initial use and gets too warm under stress. On the ThinkPad, the chassis temperature is more stable, consistently living in a middle ground that's not too cold upon initial use and doesn't let the heat of the innards bleed through unabashedly. The ThinkPad will get the 5 and the Latitude a 4. Weight is going to be the most controversial category. Please understand these are two of the lightest laptops on God's green earth. The Latitude weighs in at 3.06 pounds, while the ThinkPad is 2.65. That 15% difference might not seem like a big deal, but trust me, the Latitude feels chonky, while the ThinkPad is lightweight and tossable. It's enough of a difference to give the ThinkPad a two-point lead at five to the Latitude's Three. Heat is virtually the same for both laptops. They both use the same CPU and give it identical power restrictions. I've already deducted the latitude a point because of the aluminum body and how it fails to mitigate heat transference, so it's not fair to dock it another point. They'll both get fives. These laptops do not have equal holes in the side. The Latitude is down by one USB-A port but makes up for it with a micro SD card reader which the ThinkPad lacks. Everything else is identical, just not all in the same spot. Since this is the laptop I'll be traveling with, I'd prefer to have a card reader to easily transfer pictures from my camera. The Latitude wins this category with a 5 and the ThinkPad will get a 4 because I'm still okay with carrying a USB adapter. 
As the saying goes, it's what's on the inside that counts. But in this case, there's nothing that counts against either of these competitors with soldered RAM, an upgradable SSD, and a WAN slot for a 5G modem. But wait, what's this? The ThinkPad has a pen garage, and it came with one. The Latitude probably doesn't have one because of a patent that Lenovo keeps in a war chest and Dell's legal team can't think enough outside the box. For that, the Latitude gets a 4 and the ThinkPad muscles its way to a 5. The typing experience is ultra important and it must be a good one. The ThinkPad has an excellent keyboard. It's 95% the size of a regular keyboard and a respectable 95% of the standard ThinkPad experience with keys that are a little too firm at times. Compared to a 14 inch laptop, my speed and accuracy does take a hit and is slightly annoying. It also has page up and down keys right next to the arrows and I hit them on accident all the freaking time. The Latitude's keyboard is awesome. It's also 95% size, but is dead quiet with mushy keys that still give excellent feedback. Dedicated home and end keys are right where I expect them, same as the ThinkPad, and page up and down are secondary functions of the arrow keys. I also totally dig the font on the Latitude. It's elegantly crisp over the white backlight. The Latitude is going to climb away with the 5, and the ThinkPad is going to get a 3. One point docked for the lesser typing feel, one more point for the damn page up and down keys. They're that annoying. But then the ThinkPad is going to get a point back because it has a nipple mouse and physical keys on top of the touchpad. I also don't have a touchpad category in these comparisons, so yeah, it gets a 4. The displays on these laptops are slightly different in every conceivable way. Besides the fact that they both show 100% of the sRGB spectrum, the ThinkPad's colors come off as slightly warm in its 16 by 10 aspect ratio with less ghosting. It's overall more useful than the Latitude thanks to its taller nature. Quickly switching from the ThinkPad to the Latitude for productivity tasks instantly feels a little claustrophobic. The ThinkPad is going to get the 5 and the Latitude is going to get a 3. It's not that I don't like the Latitude's display, it's that I greatly prefer the ThinkPad's. Speakers are quite important to me as a laptop user as I sometimes utilize them to show off my music and YouTube videos. The Latitude covers a good range of the sound spectrum with some bass. The ThinkPad has good clarity in the mid and upper range, but lacks bass completely. Neither laptop emits enough decibels to fill a boardroom, and headphones would be nice to have with both. The Latitude speakers are just better enough to merit the 5 and stiff the Latitude with a 4. This is a test of the webcam on the ThinkPad X13. 720p, this is an excellent lighting. Motion is pretty decent. I did have to turn off the audio enhancements on the microphone in order for it to sound really good. If you actually watch the review of this laptop, the microphone by default sounds terrible. But if you turn off those audio enhancements, the microphone actually does sound pretty decent. And this is a test of the webcam on the Dell Latitude 7320. Same excellent lighting conditions. The motion is slightly better on this 720p webcam over the ThinkPad, but I still had to disable these special audio effects in order to get a clean microphone monologue. Yes, the video quality is slightly better on the Latitude than the ThinkPad, but it's not that far ahead in order to make me consider the Latitude over the ThinkPad so they're both going to get fives. You'd think that system performance on these laptops would be equal because they both have the same CPU with very similar power limits. But in the real world, looks can be deceiving. But here, they're not. Same CPU, same performance, both get fives. PC gaming performance is also identical since the rating is based solely on performance. It's worth arguing that the ThinkPad 16x10 aspect ratio throws a wrench in the spokes at times, but it's not annoying often enough to deduct a whole point over. They should both get threes due to the obvious lack of teraflops, but since they're only being compared to each other, they'll both get fives. Weird, I know, just deal with it. Retro gaming is a different story because it's a combination of performance in conjunction with the peripherals. It's also where you're going to hate me. There are three areas where these laptops clash in quality. 
battery life, the speakers, and the display. The Latitude has slightly longer battery life, slightly better speakers, but a noticeably blurrier screen. Personally, the most weight, from me, is on the screen. I abhor ghosting in 2D games, and the ThinkPad has a reasonably suitable gray-to-gray -gray rating. As such, the ThinkPad is going to get the 5, and the Latitude is close enough behind to get a 4. Now that I've gone through all the categories, it's time to tally up the scores. And the winner of the best budget 2-in-1 is... The Lenovo IdeaPad 5 14-inch? That hot and heavy behemoth doesn't hold a candle to these two! And the winner is... The Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Yoga Gen 2 by 2 points. If the Latitude had a display with less ghosting, it would have won, and that's exactly how I feel at this point. Likewise, if you don't weigh in as heavily in the display department, you might want to pick the 7320 over the X13, and that's okay. Nobody's perfect. This has been a head-to-head -head comparison of the Dell Latitude 7320 and the Lenovo ThinkPad X13 Yoga Gen 2 here on SlapTech. Let me know if you agree with my method or if you disagreed with any of my ratings by throwing a comment down below. If you liked the video, you should deeply consider clicking the like button or even subscribing to the channel. Stay tuned for more great budget laptop reviews coming very soon. Thanks for watching and you guys... Have a good night.